today I'm going to talk about how to reconstitute bacillin that's been purchased in Mexico um, and also how to add lidocaine into the syringe so that when you give your bacillin injection um, it is a lot less painful for yourself or for the person you're assisting. So you're going to want to take something like a Clorox cleanup wipe or similar, something antibacterial, and really scrub down your work area. You wanna be sure that you get any kind of dirt or debris off because you're working with medication that you're going to inject into your body or um, the body of somebody you care for, so it's very important. Um, while that we're ready to start drawing up our medication, I wanted to mention to you that the bacillin that comes from Mexico um, that I have found tends to come in a smaller dose than uh, the usual or typical dose that many of us are prescribed. So this um, suspension is uh, 1 million 200 thousand units and for me I have the 2.4 uh, million units um, for uh, my order. So if that's the case then in order to meet your um, you know your desired um, amount, you're going to have to mix two different vials, which works out really great because you can mix one and insert it, you know, inject it into your right side and then mix the other and inject it into your left side, which makes it easier on your muscle. Uh, it doesn't put so much of the medication in at once because it is a very uh, thick medication. So it's, it's pretty beneficial. So I'm going to set these aside and uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna drop our lidocaine. I am gonna go ahead and use that syringe that I mentioned earlier, the 5ml, uh, 5 cc's, and I'm gonna open this up using a very sterile clean technique. Okay, we don't wanna to touch the edge of this, and I'm gonna put this needle on top very tightly, and I'm gonna draw back the same amount of air that I would like to draw of solution. Uh, the air is necessary for the vacuum so that you can um, draw it out, otherwise it makes it a little hard. We're always gonna use an alcohol swab and really give it a scrubbing because this medicine is going in a body, so you really want to be sure that it is just as clean as possible. And prior to turning on the camera just a minute ago, I washed my hands again, so uh, it's very important. So I'm gonna draw about two mLs, also known as cc's, and you can see that there, that's about the amount that I want. You could try it with 1.5, that'd probably be plenty. Um, it's just kind of preference and trial and error, and, and really following whatever your healthcare provider tells you to do. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick the needle in here, and I'm injecting my air right now. I'm gonna flip it over. Oops. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw my two units, or two mLs, there we go. And that's just about it, two mLs. I, it looks like I have a couple bubbles. I'm not really gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my syringe out and set the lidocaine aside. I'm gonna use what's called the one-handed scoop method so that I am sure that I do not contaminate my needle. And then if you can find just a nice surface or something, here's my Clorox wipes, to uh, really get that needle top on. Uh, that way you know you've maintained the integrity of that. Okay, uh, next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna draw up our bacillin um, and each of the bacillin's um, boxes here comes with powder in a vial and also a little um, thing of little ampule of um, normal saline. This is a little different than what I had seen in the U.S. in that um, you really kind of need to use some scissors, a fork, a knife to pry this metal off because obviously you can't, um, you know, you can't go through that with a needle. Um, and so this is uh, the needle that we're going to use, the one I spoke about earlier. This is the big needle, the 10 ml, 18 gauge, one and a half inch needle. So if you can see here, I'll get this started so you see what I'm talking about, but you've got to get this off like so. And then you can see 
there's a place for you to inject the needle. But my experience was that this stopper is way, way too thick for my needle. And I bent several needles just trying to get through the rubber to get to the medicine. <laughs> so let me show you, I, I'm gonna wrestle with this. Um, I'm gonna go off here for a minute. Um, and I'm gonna wrestle with this and get the rest of this metal off. And it, it does take a little bit of time, but you'll, you'll get it. Um, so I'll be right back. Okay. I finished getting the rest of the metal off. So you can see here that this is just a rubber stopper now. Um, and I have my saline here ready to mix. And really, I don't like to mix it until almost the, uh, as last minute as possible, only because it gets pretty thick. And that is really what causes the pain a lot of the I have time. pulled out my 10 ml or 10 cc syringe well, this is the big needle. It has the 18 gauge, one and a half inches on it. And I am going to draw up my bacillin once I reconstitute it and um, I'll kind of show you how to do that. Again, this needle does not go through the topper very easily. So I have found the best way is to get um, a fresh alcohol swab and really, really scrub around there um, and just gently lift it off comes up really easily without touching the inside at all if possible getting your saline squeezing that into your bottle of powder and then carefully putting the lid back on tightly make sure it's on there pretty tight and then we're just going to mix now mixing it it takes a little bit of time <laughs> Um, just to be sure that it is thoroughly mixed, you know, I would honestly do this for about a minute just to be sure that it's thoroughly mixed. Um, but you can see it turns into kind of a milky substance. Don't worry about the bubbles. It's okay. We can deal with those later. Um, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep mixing and I'll be right back. Okay. I got this thoroughly mixed. You can see it here. It just really kind of looks like milk with some bubbles in it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and because it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, for me to get my needle through this stopper, for some reason it's super thick, um, I'm going to go ahead and take the stopper off again. And this is why that clean and or sterile technique, as sterile as you can get it, is really important. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the top off of my big syringe and I'm just going to carefully without contaminating anything by going clear inside where I know it's still very sterile. I'm gonna start to draw up, oops, wrong place to start. There we go. I'm gonna start drawing up the bacillus. And you can see, um, you know, the bubbles in my syringe, that's okay. And then what I kind of do here is I just give it a couple pats, maybe get the air out. And then I'll go back in and get the rest of it. There's not very much left. But you definitely want to get, you know, all of it so you get the full dose. Okay, so that is empty. And I'm going to go ahead and keep tapping this. Actually, what I'll do first is I will do the one-handed scoop. Oops, where is it? There it is. You can see it. Oops, the one-handed scoop so that I know my needle is staying clean. Again, I'm going to push it against a hard surface. Um, and I'm just going to kind of tap it because I really want my bacillin to be down into the lower portion of the syringe. I don't really love all the drops of bacillin in here because that's going to mix with my lidocaine. And in theory, could cause some discomfort, although I have found it doesn't really. Um, because we're going to fill this needle, this little portion here, with our two mLs. Of lidocaine so that when you inject that will be going in first so I'm just gonna try to kind of tap it down as much as I can so that the sides are as clean as they can be and um, then I'm going to take this needle off if you can maintain sterile technique then go ahead and reuse that needle if you touch the hub of the needle or anything like that, just go ahead and get a fresh needle. It's not going to hurt anything, and that way you know that you are in good shape. Okay, now, while holding this, I'm going to go ahead and pull the... Oopsie, 
underneath my right hand. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the um, lidocaine syringe lid off. And I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully insert my needle and go very slowly, allowing the lidocaine to kind of drip down the wall of the syringe. I don't know if you can see it, but I am slowly injecting that. Okay, so my lidocaine is gone. I'm going to dispose of this needle in a sharps container. I'm not going to use that again. Now, if you can see, this part here is my lidocaine, and the bottom part is the bacillin. So I'm going to go ahead and push it up very gently. Um, okay, and because I was able to keep my needle very, very sterile and clean, I'm going to go ahead and put the same needle back on very hard. Put it in very hard. So in theory now, when you go to inject, the first portion, although it is mixed with some bacillin, is mostly lidocaine, and it works. So when you inject, of course, you always want to aspirate to make sure you have not hit a blood vessel. That's very important, and that would be something you need to talk to your healthcare provider about so that you feel very confident giving the shot, because it is a difficult shot to give. Um, you have nerves, you have blood vessels, and you definitely don't want to inject or hit any of those items because that would be very uncomfortable. So there's plenty of room to aspirate, which is just when you pull back once you're in the muscle, just to make sure you don't get any blood return or anything like that. And inject about the first two cc's, wait about 30 to 60 seconds, and then very, very slowly inject the rest of the bacillin, which is this bottom portion. Um, it's not really showing it as clearly as I'd like, but it, the top two mLs are, are much clearer than the bacillin down here. So you inject the top two cc's um, into a large muscle, such as your uh, hip gluteus uh, area muscle. Um, you know, you uh, aspirate and you slowly push in the two mLs of lidocaine. Wait 30 to 60 seconds to give the lidocaine time to remove the pain. And then very slowly, honestly, maybe even over the course of a couple minutes, push in the rest of the bacillin. And yeah, take some time and that's it. Um, it won't be completely pain-free, but it is so much better than the alternative. It's like night and day. Um, so I thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.